that we are holy, not that we are righteous. But by his grace and his mercy, we are here this morning. Let's be on our feet and appreciate him that daddy, we thank you, we worship you. We give all the glory this afternoon. We thank you for making me to say another glorious, blessed Sunday to come and say thank you, Jesus. Let's thank you for every family that are here, family that are not here. Let bless the name of the Lord that daddy, we thank you for your saving grace, for your mercy, for your faithfulness. Even we are not faithful, we say thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord, we give all the glory. Thank you for his provision. Thank you for being our burden bearer. Thank you for every battle that Lord will be fighting every minute, every second. All the victory, the victory ahead. Let's say blessed be unto your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Let's thank you for the church of God for having another promotion unto us concerning our pastor that was ordained. Let's say that we thank you. We bless our holy name for taking us to greater heights. We say thank you, Jesus. We give all the glory. We give honor for the new beginning. Let's say that we thank you. We worship you. You are worthy to be praised for the new beginning. Hallelujah be unto you. Glory and adoration be unto you. Let's thank the Lord for what he did in our midst. In the night of mercy, it was awesome. Let's thank you for the testimony, for the miracle, for the signs and wonder, for the word of comfort, the word of healing, the word of deliverance, the word of restoration. Let's say, Daddy, we are grateful. Jehovah, we are grateful. Everlasting Father, we are grateful. Alpha, the Holy God, we are grateful. The one that can do we are grateful. Thank you for the healing of our bodies and spirit. Daddy, we say thank you for the healing of our bodies and spirit. We bless our holy name. Let's thank the Lord for our daddy in the law. The Lord has used for us in the night of mercy and he continued to use him for us. Let's say, Daddy, we thank you. We worship you. We bless our holy name. What a mighty God will serve the King of glory. Hallelujah be unto you for what you have done through your son, O God. For manifest of power, gracefully. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you King of glory. Blessed glory and adoration be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to thank the Lord for today's service. It's a family talk. It's not an ordinary talk, but it's a talk that the Lord will make as many to come out of bondage. The Lord will open our eyes. He will enlighten us. He will give us direction. He will give us wisdom. He will give us knowledge, understanding in, not, in, in, in order to be able to invest. Our Father, we say thank you. Let's bless the soul in the Father, Lord, we thank you. We worship you for this wonderful family family talk that's coming up today, we give all the glory because we know you will manifest your power. Because we know you open our eyes to see what we don't know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed glory and adoration be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we give thanks. Let's pray that the Lord should have mercy upon us and forgive us all our sin. Every sin we might have committed as a new individual, as a family, as a church that will not allow the glory of God to come down that will not allow to receive our blessing in full. That Father, I'm mercy and forgive us this, this afternoon. You're a merciful God. You send unto Moses that you have mercy upon who you have mercy upon. And you will have compassion upon who you have compassion upon. Daddy, we have come before your throne this morning, this afternoon, to have mercy upon us, O God. Father, we your children, know God. Is there anything in our life as an individual, as a family, as a church, O God, that will not allow mercy of God to come down, that will not allow your glory to come down, that will not allow able to open upon this service today. That will not allow to receive our blessing in full. That will not allow your anointing to flow. Father, have mercy and forgive us, O oh God. Father, wash us and cleanse us with the precious blood of Jesus. You are a merciful God. Father, have mercy upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are going to cover this place with the precious blood of Jesus. As the word of God said, they will come by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of testimony. The Father, Lord, will sanctify this auditorium with the precious blood of Jesus. All the share, all the instrument, all the choir ministry will cover everyone with the precious blood of Jesus. Everyone coming on this altar to minister will cover with the precious blood of Jesus. We cover the Sabbath from beginning to the end with the precious blood of Jesus. We pray the blood of Jesus. Let it begin to come again every history that is not gone. Every territory demon, every 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 satanic power, every spirit of confusion that will come against you by the power and the blood of Jesus, we bind you in the name of Jesus. That you will not find your place in this midst, in our midst today, in the name of Jesus. That the spirit of God will move mightily, the power of God will move mightily in the name of Jesus. Let's invite us of heaven, twenty-four and the heaven, to come down mightily into this service, so God. That we don't want it to be ordinary service, so God. That you alone. 
want to see the king of glory, the mighty God, that your presence should flow mightily, your power should move mightily in our midst today, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, manifest your power. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Holy Spirit, be the one to minister. Father, let that be open everywhere. We invite us of heaven. 24, 24, 24, 24, and the heaven. We call you to come down mightily, to come and take the place for us, O God, to come and take, take over this activity today, the program we are having today, to be a blessing to our life, O God, that our life will be imparted, that will not be here alone, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, we worship you. Let's pray for the, the daughter that the Lord is going to use, and everyone that's ministry, or the choir, that the Lord should anoint everyone afresh in the name of Jesus. As the Lord anoint Jesus Christ of Nazareth, according to the word of the, of the, of the book of the law, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the book of the law, in the Acts 10 38, when Jesus and not Jesus Christ so Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power, the Father and not everyone with Holy Ghost and power, that we don't want any flesh ministration today, every ministration by flesh we saw do right now, in the name of Jesus Father and not everyone mightily, uh, the guest minister the choir, Father and not everyone minister mightily, Father Lord for the Spirit of God to move forward let everyone manifest under the unction of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord, we ask so God that anyone that will minister on this altar, oh God, they will manifest under the ocean of the Holy Ghost, oh God, in the name of Jesus. There won't be any spirit of flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. I will come here together. It will be for a purpose today, in the name of Jesus. That our testimony shall be permanent today, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, we worship you, we bless the holy name. Hallelujah, bless to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we as I learned to say, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of cancer and mighty, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We are going to cry unto the Lord. The Father, Lord, as your daughter be ministry today, Lord, give us that spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the knowledge that we need. Oh God, Father, Lord, for us, oh God, this today program to be fruitful in our life. Father, Lord, release upon us, oh God, that wherever our hands are be eating that our eyes is not open to investment to God. It's only the Spirit of God that can even direct us. When the Spirit of God come upon us, it will lead us to direct us. It will cancel us to do the right thing at the right time. And I begin to pray the Father, let your spirit rest upon us this afternoon as we listen, oh God, to this lecture this afternoon, oh God, that the understanding we need, wherever our eyes need to be open, oh God. Father, open our eyes, so oh God, so that our life will be fruitful, oh God, so that this program and be fruitful in our life, oh God. It will not just be another program in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we beg you, oh God. Father, Lord, please, oh God, let the spirit of cancer rest upon us. Spirit of understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, for our hearts to open, oh God, for us to receive direction, oh God, and to be able to invest, oh God, for this topic today to be fruitful in our life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, we worship you, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah be unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's see this song to glorify the name of the Lord. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we thank you because you know all the glory shall be unto you after today's service, O God, that your name alone shall be glorified. Father, Lord, we commit all the service to your hands from beginning to the end, that you take your place in the name of Jesus. It shall be for you, O God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we dedicate the service open in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, everlasting Father, King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The one that the Lord has, saved, that has kept, has saved, has delivered, and has brought into his presence this afternoon. Let us give a powerful hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 We are just going to open our hearts unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords as we worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up. Thank you. 
God, hallelujah. Amen. Let's put our dancing shoes on as we have to shake the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah.
Oh my God. 
Hallelujah. We are going to take our congregational in. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, my O oh God, my Father.
Praise the Lord. If you are happy to be in his presence this morning, can you shout a powerful hallelujah? A shout of hallelujah would not cease from our abode in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Apata Irapada Shadwehi. In English, it's called Rock of Redemption. Praise the Lord. Uh, firstly, before we go into the announcement, if you are worshiping with us for the first time, you might have attended our weekly program, but if this is the first Sunday you are worshiping with us, can you signify by raising up your hand? We want to recognize you. We want to welcome you to the house of God. Anyone worshiping with us for the first time? Uh, we know, mommy, thank you. <laughs> can you be... Can we put on our feet, please, while we welcome you into our midst? Fire, please. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are want to know the purpose that has brought you here. All we care about is that the Lord will meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not regret stepping into this auditorium today in the mighty name of Jesus. Please don't rush home when we close. You have to meet, uh, the pastor will have to meet with you. We need to know you more. We need to know more about you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We, our online digital registration is still on. I think people were finding it difficult to register online because you cannot register your child or your children, but it has been amended, it has been corrected. Uh, technical team, please can you help us project it? We want to have the details of everyone digitally, so we don't want to, we want to reduce the paperwork. Please, if you know you haven't completed your registration, just under two minutes, you are done. Your name, your telephone number, your email address, so that we can be in contact with you. Is it? Okay, for the guests. This is for the guests. We still have for, for church member. Thereafter, that one will be projected. But for the guests, please, can you scan the barcode so that you can put your details instead of filling paper here and there. If you just scan it, please, can you still put it on the board, please? If you can scan it, just put in your details, then we will receive it. I will be able to be in contact with you. As you do that, the Lord Almighty will be with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And for the church member, please do not forget, we still need to register all our children. Please, immediately you finish that, you can go back, then you can re-register. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Our program for the week starts on Monday while we come together online because we want to commit the week into the hands of the Lord. Between the hour of 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning, the prayer team come together. It's for all church members, not only for prayer team. Between the hour, we commit the week into the hands of the Lord. And on that same Monday, between the hour of 8.30 p.m. and 9 p.m., they still meet together. We still pray. Like, thank God. I want to emphasize on this prayer because the issue of praying came in in our Sunday school. 
so that we will know the benefit of prayer. And on Wednesday, they still meet together between the hour of 8.30 and 9. The prayer team come together again. Then on Thursday, it's for all the church members between the hour of 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Everyone come together. And on Tuesday, we have our Bible study. On Tuesday, is our Bible study. That's why prayer, we are not praying on that day because of the Bible study. And our daddy has volunteered that is going to help us this Bible study. It's done online, sir. It's done online. So all of us, we are going to be online. Please, the, uh, our sister that asked the question of prayer, in, she knows the importance of prayer. I know she knows. But that same question she was asking is bothering other people out there. And please, let us come so that we can learn more. We can know the importance of prayer. And as we join that Bible study on Tuesday, that Lord will meet us at the point of our need in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, pastor will need to meet with elders and ministers immediately after the service. Please don't rush you. And again, he will still need to meet with all choir. All the choir. Pastor wants to see you after the service. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Today we are going to be richly blessed. That image is too cold. We are going to be richly blessed today. Our mommy will be coming up later to put us through on the topic that says building financial freedom. From today, we will be financial freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not be in financial bondage in the mighty name of Jesus. Even both in UK and in Nigeria. So don't say, oh, it's meant for UK. It's going to take us through how you can build your financial freedom both in UK and in Nigeria. And as we listen, the Lord Almighty will be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. And please do not let us forget this Friday is going to be our FOA, Festival of Life. <laughs> Festival of Life. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, because, you know, uh, headquarters program supersede whatever we have in, in parishes. Because of that, we are not going to have Tuesday Bible study. Please. Our daddy will still be available up at Tuesday, sir. You will help us up at Tuesday. This Tuesday, all of us, we have to be at, uh, it's online. It's online. We have to join online for the work. It's not online. It's physical. Okay. So which building center is close to us, sir? Liberty Connection. Okay, please. Let us be there. Workers meet here. Uh, workers rally. Okay, and the cell registration is required. You know, because of COVID now, we need to put everything together and register so that they know the number of people that are coming to each center. Please let us do that, please. And on Friday, we all gather at Exer. Please, let us put this in our mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As workers in the church of God, there are some qualities we must possess. And one of the qualities is discipline in the church of God. And what do we mean when we are talking about discipline? Anyone that comes late to his or her duty post is not discipline. And as a result of this, please, I just want to encourage us. We have a we have pastor that he will just overlook, for it's not nice. When we already know that workers' meeting will start by 11.15, workers in the church will still be coming around 11.15. What do you want to do? Somebody was giving workers' meeting to anchor to the, the person didn't show up. And I don't know whether the person contacted anyone. This is not nice. When we are saying other people are not disciplined, we ourselves are we disciplined. I, I want to thank our daddy that I said we were going to his church when we were in Nigeria. No, 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 st no workers dare come late. How, how dare you? You won't come late to church. Because since you are, a you are a worker in the church of God, you have taken the mantle that come sun, come rain, 
you are there. I will see the chair, everything is empty. Why workers are still coming? If we know that I came home around 4 a.m. this morning. But we have to be in the church. If you are not coming, it's another case. If we are not coming, you can call pastor. Oh, pastor, today I'm not coming to church. Um, you might be running late as well. You might be running late. You just call pastor. Pastor, please, I'm stuck in the traffic. I'm running late. I think, please, let us, if we have a pastor that will not talk, let us discipline ourselves, please. It's not nice when workers are just coming in 11.15, when you know that workers' meeting will start by 11.15. Please let us adjust our program. Because when we are saying UK, 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 all right, the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's any other announcement, Pastor will bring it to our notice in the course of the service. Praise the Lord. I know pe people are not happy. Praise the Lord. God chases those he loves. We cannot be tired of appreciating our maker. Once again, let's pray the name of our Lord. Let somebody praise the Lord. <laughs> Devil is in trouble today. How many people agree with me? It has been in trouble since long time ago. So Friday, <laughs> Friday was awesome. He has been defeated forever and ever. Although, you know, according to the word of God on the cross, because it's finished. But we thank God for mercy night. Daddy, God bless you, sir. We're all blessed. And testimony is coming in the mighty name of Jesus. It's time to give our tithe and offering. I love us to, we just, as believers, we just want to, you know, remind ourselves of the word of God, Deuteronomy 8.18. So that whenever we think we have arrived in the UK, we say, yes, I have three, four-story build, um, buildings. I have these in Nigeria. I have these in Uganda. I have these in Sierra Leone. I have these in Ghana. I have that. And you are boastful to say, yes, it's my hard work. The Bible is trying to remind us. Deuteronomy 8.18 is the one that gives it power to make wealth. Love us to read it together. It's the Bible verse. They're all familiar. Technica. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Just like we say, some of what we say, my power, my strength, my hands work, my degree, my first degree, my second degree, my PhD, my everything. That's why I'm rich. No, that's why I'm where I am. No, the Bible is reminding us that. Remember that it is the Lord, your God, who gives you the power to become rich. Another Bible verse, we say the power to make wealth. He does this because he is still faithful today to the covenant that he made with your ancestors. Bless somebody, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, the Bible encourages us, he honors his word more than his name. So whatever he says is what he will do. We thank God for the word of God. Don't forget this section we are, you know, paying our offering, our tithe simultaneously. If you are writing your check, please do not forget to make it payable to our city of redemption. And please, if you are filling the envelope, don't forget to keep the tick to get it. It's very important. And we pray, don't forget, like we always say, it's an opportunity for us anytime we have, you know, we are in the midst. You know, in the presence of God is an opportunity to give to God. Like David encouraged us, only the living that can praise God. It's only the living that can also give to God. We want to appreciate God that we are living being. And that's why we have the opportunity. Anytime we are, in the anywhere we, we see it, we should see it as an opportunity. And I pray we will not be replaced in the church of God, in the where, wherever we occupy in our family. In the, you know, where even we are even walking, we will not be replaced even in the house of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Our position will not be empty in the church of God and in our family in the mighty name of Jesus. Like I said, that the devil is in trouble today. Uh, the Lord is, you know, making us to get free with financial issue. And we pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we just pray on our offering and our tithes? Shall we send our, can we send our offering and our tithes into Aaron? and begin to speak to God. 
You know, he has promised us in the book of Malachi that he will open the windows of heaven unto us. You know, he said we should put him to test. I love you to pray. You, he's not a son of man that he had. Whatever he say, he do. His word he do. I love you even to tell God that concerning even today's family talk, that in the mighty name of Jesus, he established that the only one that make that give it power to make wealth, that that idea that we need, that that knowledge that we need, that understanding, and that breakthrough, you know, that we need to be established, even financially, even to be debt free, that heaven will help us in the mighty name of Jesus, that our Lord wants to give us idea where, where, or where others are struggling, that we will not struggle. When others are saying there is casting down, we are saying there is lifting up in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, every hand that has given. For, Father, we pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will multiply in millions fold, and this money shall be used for the expansion of your kingdom alone. Is there anyone saying, Father, support, even if, uh, if you can do this for me, I'd I, I love to give more also. We pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that heaven we we grant the desire of our heart according to his will and purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us please be on our feet as we give our offering joyfully to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, my 
Glory be to God. The time is now for our family talk. I can't wait to pray that the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Our family talk of today is a special one. As you know that we have a guest minister in our midst. The topic is building financial, financial freedom, both here and in Africa generally. But we have a project in Nigeria where she's going to put us through and it's very very important a lot of people have been a blessing into that they, they you know buy land in a very good place and um a living testimony because somebody very very close to me you know came to you know where we went to nigeria and then she put us through with it and so we can be rest assured that it's legitimate in the mighty name of jesus and we know that uh, we, we will not bring by the special grace of god something that we we have not, you know, tested and confirmed by, the, by, by his mercy. Um, it's time, I'd love to introduce our sister, Mrs. Remy Shomefun. Um, just say, we just want to say some little things about our sister. She's a real estate consultant, a business manager. She's a young and self-motivated ent entrepreneur and a real estate professional. The flair for adding values to people's life. She has had the experience over four years, experience in real estate business. And we can testify she's competent in the area of capacity uh, building, business development, marketing negotiation, and of course, people's management. We thank God and we pray that the Lord will use her to bless us mightily this afternoon. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Lord, to welcome our sister, Mrs. Remy Shomefu. Let somebody praise the Lord. Thank you very much, ma. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, church. Yeah, my name is Mrs. Remy Shomefu. I came from Bradford in the United Kingdom. Before I proceed, I would like to appreciate the set man in this ministry, the man of God and the wife. I want to thank them for the privilege they've given me to come here and stand before you to speak to you. It's a rare privilege, really. And I'm not taking that for granted. I'm grateful. Thank you very much, ma. 
thank you very much, Sister. I want to appreciate all the ministers in the house. God will continue to use you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay? I'm going to be talking about building financial freedom, both in UK and in Nigeria. And um, the Bible verse given to me is Proverbs 21, verse 5. Brilliant idea pays off and bring you prosperity. But making a hasty, impatient decision will only lead to financial loss. And that is to tell you that the Bible is our standard for everything we do in our lives. Everything is just there. Anything you want to become, anything you want to achieve, there is a standard for us to follow in the Bible. When she came and she was like, he is the God that has given us power to make wealth. Exactly. He has given us all what it takes for us to make wealth. It is left for us to now make use of it. Uh, we sleep on it. So if you are poor, it's not God that makes you poor because he has given everybody power to make wealth. It is your own decision that has made you remain where you, you are. Like for instance, this afternoon now, if we say we should all raise up our hand and God wants to bless the works of our hand, and really you don't have anything you're doing, it means nothing will multiply. Am I right? And that is why he has given us the power. The next thing for us to do is we keep seeking information about how we can actually be financially independent. And I will be talking more about real estate because that is my field. And we are not limited to real estate when it comes to being financially independent. There are so many things you can do that can make you financially independent. But real estate remains one of the surest way I know. If not number one, I'm sure it will be one to three ways for you to be financially independent. So, Demetria, you'll be helping me with my slide. I think I need to move forward. How many minutes do I have, ma? 30 minutes. Thank you very much, sir. So, this morning, we'll be talking about what is real estate. We all know what is real. Something that is real is something that is actually existing. It's not an illusion. It is virtual. You can see it. That is being real. And so, when it comes to real estate, it has to do with land, things underneath the land, things on top of the land, everything naturally. If you have a land and there is mineral resources under it, is it not still your land? So real estate is just not limited to being land alone. It could be some, you might have a structure on it. You might have something beneath it. And that is what real estate is all about. It's all about both something underneath and on top of your land. And I'll proceed by saying we have different type of real estate. There are some people today, what they do is they are into developing. They are developers. That is their own aspect. And I mentioned in my slide, we have four. I said land. When we talk about land, that is the early development. It's just still there. There is nothing there. It's still fresh. It can be used for farming. It can be used for rearing of cattle, sheep, or anything you want to use it for. It's just still normal land. But when we move to residential, we're talking about there is a structure already on the land. It's different from being just being there. There's a structure on the land. That is what makes it a residential. And when you have a structure on the land, you can also still resell your, your, your structure, probably your property. And I talk about um, residential is actually... Like where we live is a residential apartment. Where we live is a residential apartment. It's different from commercial. In estates, we have commercials. There is no how we have our layout and there won't be commercial plots. You know why? In an estate, it is expected that you have some things like shopping mall. There are some estates that there is hotels, there is schools, there is playing courts. So those places are places you set aside for your commercial businesses. So people within the estate, you can service them. 
So those are commercial floors because by the time you see the layout of what I'm about to advertise to you today, you see that there are some commercial there, and those areas are for people that want to build more shopping centers, education, office, and the likes. And we have industries. Industries are the manufacturing property. We have warehouses. Majorly, um, most land on the S-squares are used for industrial purposes. In Nigeria, anyway, not here. You know, in Nigeria, we so much believe in S-squares. When we say S-squares, we know that this land is going to be it's going to be big time money. Probably in the nearest future, you can decide to sell to to petrol station because they are going to use it for industrial purposes, and you will make a lot of money. And where industrials are is not residen residential cannot be where industrial um, businesses are. But it's because of the way our country is organized, we just build petrol station even within residential area. We're not supposed to have residential close to us where we buy petrol. They are supposed to be far from us. And that is the type of real estate I'm talking about. That means for you. You can decide to fall between land, residential, and commercial building. That means when I talk about residential, you're buying a house. It's either you're building a house or you're buying. When we talk about commercial property, you can buy land and you decide to build units of shops. You can buy, for some of us, we have vision to own a school in the future. That means we can be buying commercial property so that we can build our schools in the future. Let's go to the next slide. I need to open my slide. Okay. So I, I, I said, what is financial freedom? Normally, our layman, when you go online, you see savings, you see cash, you see investment. But for us in real estate, and for me, I believe financial freedom is that thing that you have that even when you stop working, it's still working for you. And that's why you see the other point I highlighted, on taking ownership of your own finances to live the kind of life you desire to live. Money that comes in when you stop working. Money will not come in when you stop working, except you have worked before for the money. And when money begins to work for you, and there are ways this thing can work for us, money begins to work for us. There are ways money can work for us. I'm going to talk about that later. How do money work for you? And that is how you invest, when your money starts working for you. For some of us, for some people, when they grow old, they cannot li longer live the kind of lifestyle they are living before. You know why? They didn't invest properly. Maybe those days they do ride tear rubber cars, and by the time they grow older, there is no money to finance that kind of lifestyle again. Is because they didn't plan for retirement. They didn't plan for those days they won't be able to work again. And that is what I'm talking about. Your money working for you is when you have financial freedom. You might not be there now, but you can work towards attaining that level. And that is why I'm here today, because we can draw a 10-year plan to attain that level. We can draw a 15-year plan to attain that level. You must know when you are retiring. And when you retire, something must work for you. We must not be a burden to other people. Like the kind of lifestyle. Some people, they believe, uh, when I go old, all my children will be sending money to me and things like that. It's good because you need to eat the food of your labor. But at the same time, don't be a burden to those children that are just growing up too. It's not too good. We have parents that does a lot for their children, even when they were still young. Maybe they just graduated from school. They buy them cars. The same way we have parents that you've just even started work. They start saying, maybe you are earning 70000 They're sending 30000 home. It's a burden. It's because they've not planned well, so they, they now depend on that child. But when you're, when you're successful as a parent, you start planning with that child how she can manage your money and things like that. Let's move to the next slide. So um, how do you attain financial freedom? We're talking about property. I used to tell people, 
where you are is a good place to invest when it comes to property. Property in the last five years is not the same thing now. For those people that have bought house in London five years ago, they know what it is now. Somebody was telling me that in Bradford before, there used to be 60,000 pounds house. I said, that is so cheap. But I went online, and I, what I could see now is 150 and above. And that is what we call investment. I tell people, you invest both here and in your home country. You know, we have some people that when they travel out, they want to forget about their home country. I hope we don't have anybody like that here. I tell people Nigeria will be great again. I have that belief. Because somebody like me, Africa will be great again. You know, Nigeria, where I came from, we have a lot of trouble right now. We have a lot of things going on that we're not happy about. But it's my desire that God help my country. Because someone like me, I really love that country and I want to return home. And I have my plans. And Nigeria have to get better to suit my plans. Because I told myself, I'm going to return back to Nigeria when I'm 50 years. Some people are ready to return back to Nigeria. They cannot go now because of insecurity. It's not because they are not ready. They are ready, but they cannot go. God, God will settle that country in Jesus' name. And that is why I used to tell people, we will learn from what is happening between the Russia and the Ukraine war, Abi. Some people they believe I, I don't want to do I don't have to I don't want to have anything to do with my country. But some of them went back home without having anything in that country. And people that are home started mocking them. But you've been in this place for years and things like that because they got the wrong information. I know people go through a lot when they are abroad and they need to invest in other countries because they have the issue of trust. But that should not make you to stop investing. Buying property in the United Kingdom is very achievable for all of us. All we need to know is you just have to find a legal representative that you can talk to and know how eligible you are. I used to tell people in the Christian faith, they will tell you if you want to buy a car and you don't have the money, you can go and buy tire and key into it. You don't understand. Most of the time, we want to do some things. We're looking at, I don't have it. Have you made inquiries? Get information of what it takes to own this thing first. So that when the time comes, you are ready. Some of us, we are even ready. We don't know we are ready because we don't have the information. Everything we need to buy house in UK, we are eligible already, but we don't know. But some people will say, I'm not buying, I cannot buy here. This is not my country. I'm going back home. So we are going back home. You will live in UK for 20 years and you will be paying house rent. Don't you know it's that same money you're using to pay house rent is what you're supposed to use to service your mortgage. But because you think you don't, you, you, some people don't want UK to cheat them. They think they are cheating them. I don't want UK to cheat me. I don't want to have anything to do. Once I'm done, I'm going home. Even if you are going home, you can sell then. But it will be wise you start, you get a plan, be on that plan. Instead of paying monthly rent, you're using that to service your mortgage. 25 years is just around the corner. Before we open our eyes, 10 years is gone, 15 years is gone, 20, 25 years is gone. If you tell yourself you are going to spend 15 years in UK and you end up spending 25 years, what happened? You remain a tenant for 25 years. It does not make sense. The assignment I have to give you today is you need to go to a solicitor and start asking, this is, this is my document, how eligible I am to get a property. There are several ways to get property here, and these are what I've listed. Some people buy at auction. It's very cheap when you buy that kind of property. It also involves you getting mortgage and some deposits. That is what it involves. You have to know if you are eligible to. There is this um, program going on now, Help to Buy. The deadline is 31st of October. I have people that have benefited from Help to Buy. 
Help to buy is very simple. All you need to is to make 5% depo deposit of the actual amount of the house you're buying. For UK, is for London, is different. But for other places, it is 5% deposit, 20% um, equity loan from the government, and 75% mortgage. But for UK, for London, it is 40% equity loan, 5% deposit, and 55% mortgage. And a lot of people, I have people that are less than one year in UK. Do you know they've keen to help to buy and they've bought their house and they are living there. And somebody will be wondering, how come you are just one year and you are in your house? It's because you refuse to ask for information. A lot of things are going on. Sometimes I used to tell people, all the information we even need is on our phone. As it's coming to your head, requesting it. You will get it. Or the best thing, go to your online, search for real estate in United Kingdom or the area you live. Look for a legal practitioner. Talk to them. And they will offer you different options that you can key in. The, the app to buy is still ongoing, but the deadline is 31st of October this month. Some people can still apply if you are eligible. I wrote those things you need, how you will know you are eligible, um, the documents needed is in my slide. Right to buy is similar to help to buy. Right to buy is similar to help to buy. That one, you, you might not even deposit, it's possible. Most people that live in council houses, the houses they are living, they end up buying it. So sometimes they ask you to deposit 5 to 10%, fine. You get the rest as, you look for a mortgage lender, you get your money, and you buy, they give you your key, and you move in. That is right to buy. Um, true share ownership, I won't advise that. But it's also a means of buying a property. And building your own, I won't advise that here too. Because it's just the way it works in Africa. I don't know about other African countries that you need to get approved building plan. They call it a um, planning process here for you to build. In this country, do we even have time to go and be buying materials and things like that? It's so stressful. So I don't think it's feasible for us to now start saying, I want to build on my own. But all, the, all those points, number one, two, three, are things we can talk to a solicitor about and see the one that suits us. Instead of you paying that house rent, start using it to service mortgage. Start using it to do what? To service mortgage. You can even be on, on two plans. If both husband and wife are working, your husband can get one. You can get one and you will be paying. Which is a good plan. Can we move to the next slide? Which is a good plan. I've talked about help to buy. It's back up by HM government. You need 5%. I've differentiated it. For other places, it's 20%. For London, it's 40 For other places, the mortgage is 75 for London, it is 55. Let's, let's move forward. We've talked about this. And these two, I've talked about it. It's, it's also a government scheme that allows you to buy a substantial discount if you are a council tenant. And the scheme has been for over 40 years, and it's still happening. It's still very much available. So let, let's move forward. Oh, this is so tiny. Guide on how to buy. Guide on how to buy. If you find a home, the best thing is to get a financial advisor. Sometimes um, your, your legal practitioner can look for the house for you, and you can also find the house yourself. You apply for equity loan. You do all your paperwork. They will check if you are eligible. Apply for repayment mortgage. We've said that. 
you need mortgage, you need equi equity loan if you are doing help to buy. And if it is right to buy, you need mortgage and your own deposit. And either way, you might not even have any deposit. Get the conveyancer. That is um, a legal person that will explain everything. The contract you are signing, you need to know about it, how it works. Like the equity loan now, for the first five years, it's going to be interest free. But after five years, you also pay interest on that loan. So you exchange your contract. Once both parties are satisfied, you make your 5% payment. The government pay their pay the 20% equity loan for you and your mortgage lender also pay and you get your key and move in and you start servicing your mortgage and your equity loan. That is how it works. But you still need to get, if truly you need to get a property here in UK, then search around your vicinity, get a solicitor so that you can know what is required in your own environment. Sometimes the way things work in Scotland is not the way it works in London. The way things work in Bradford is not the way it works here. And that is why it's not like our country that we already have the information, we don't even need lawyer. But even in Nigeria, it's good when you have a lawyer, when you are dealing with property. To some extent, it makes them sit tight, knowing fully whether your lawyer is representing you. If they shit others, they will not shit you. Because I want to believe your lawyer should know what he or she is doing enough. But so many of us, we don't want to pay lawyer to in Nigeria. So we just bought, cut everything and things like that. And you know, lawyer now, their 5% is constant. They might not want to come down. And when you think about property worth 50 million, you start thinking there is no need. Let me just buy without paying them. But you don't know that there are some clauses in that deed you are signing. That it is only lawyer that understand. They are the one that put it for us. And they are the one that understand it, that can counter it for you. If I'm employing a lawyer, it will work in my favor, right? So if you employ one, the interest is your own interest. And that is why you need a lawyer when it comes to property, both in your country and here, so that you can really understand what you're signing for. And your lawyer can ask questions. And if he's a property lawyer, he know what he should ask. And you won't, you won't fall in any victim. Even if the real estate wants to mess up with you, he knows how to undo them. Because he won't allow you to sign what is not meant for you to sign. So let's always engage a representative, a legal representative, when we're dealing with property. It helps us to know what we are buying. It helps a lot. In Nigeria, you will get a lawyer that will not get 5% from you if you can negotiate well. I'm telling you, it's what we have been doing. It's not all lawyers that are rigid. Some lawyers will still collect 3% to do your job for you. It's better you pay 3% of 50 million than paying 50 million with 0%. And what you have bought is not yet, is not, is not valuable. Realize, it's when you buy and it profits you, that is when you have invest rightly. But when you invest wrongly, then you're losing. So it doesn't worth it any longer. Let's move to the next slide. So documents needed. Documents needed to buy a house is like documents needed to rent a house in UK. They want to see if you're capable, your pay slip, your mortgage offer, your utility fee, your proof of identity, just the way you want to rent out everything. They want to see it. So if you're saying you want to buy a house worth 500,000 pounds, we must see your pay slip to know you can really pay it. That is what they are after. You cannot be earning 25,000 per year and you are pointing to a 500,000 pounds house. It's not, it's not possible. And that is why they are requiring all these documents so that they can know how you want to pay. If you are buying a house that is more than your salary, probably you and your husband might need to to submit your pay slip, so they will know that both of you can service this mortgage. So that is the reason why this document is needed. And these are the things that they look at to know if truly you are eligible to apply for this mortgage now or not. But it is advisable you are on a mortgage. 
You know this country we had, they like you to be on credit. When I came, I have not been buying credit, but me to have started buying credit now. Because if you don't buy credit, the day you will need something and you don't have the money to buy it, you don't have any credit score to show that you are eligible. Even if you are planning to buy a house next year, you need to start buying some small, small thing in credit. Maybe your phone. Go and buy and be paying small, small. Because I know that our lifestyle in Africa, we don't like to owe. We don't like, I don't like to buy credit, but this country is forcing me to now start buying credit. I like to have my money and buy. But it's not workable yet. So you have to drop that African mentality and work in accordance with how this place works. If you want to get that TV, you have to just buy it and be paying small, small. So that you can have a good credit score. It's part of, if you go online and look at how can you achieve financial freedom, your credit scores matters a lot. You have to have a card you are spending and you are paying back. That is the lifestyle here. So those are, those, those are the things they look at that make you eligible. That ah, you've been able to pay for the previous thing you have bought before. Definitely, if we give you this one, you will also be able to, to pay. And if you are the one, so that is the same way you will reason. You have not done one before. Then you want us to come and give you 250,000 pound house. We've not seen you buy 1,000 to something that you have studied. You've not bought 3,000 things that you have studied. Then they believe you cannot cope, you cannot do it. And if you don't start doing it, there is no how you'll be able to buy a house here in the United Kingdom. So let's move. So um, how to attain financial freedom in real estate is applicable both here and in Nigeria. I talk about land investment. Land investment and land flipping, I'm going to talk about them together. Land investment is actually when you just buy a land, a barefooted land. In its early development, there is nothing on it. It's just land that you're buying. It's a good investment when you buy land. Because when you buy land this year, and you give it five years' time, it will appreciate. You know one thing I love so much about real estate? I used to tell people that, do you know that real estate is the only business that even when you buy it expensive, it will still appreciate. Like, let's assume the property is supposed to be 2 million. They now sold to you 3 million. Maybe you now sell another real estate selling 2 million where you bought 3 million. You're like, ah, but it's the same property now and they sold to me 3 million. Do you know in no time you will get to that 3 million and it will exceed it? That is real estate for you. And that is land business for you. When you buy land, you give it time, it appreciates over time. And when we talk about land flipping, it's only working in Nigeria. A lot of real estate in Nigeria now does land flipping, which means you can buy land if you don't want to build and resell later. So this is how it works. Like my company, land flipping, for example, if you're buying two plots of land from us, let's say four million, we are telling you that if you buy this land now, in the next one year, you can get 30% increase on that land. That means after one year, you are coming back to get your 4 million and your 30% on the land. You are flipping. You are buying and you are reselling. But if you buy your land with the hope of not reselling, you will buy and you will collect all your necessary documents. And I used to advise people, when you buy land, don't just buy and leave. When you buy your land, you get your receipt, you get your deed of agreement, if, there is survey, if you have paid for your survey, you get your survey. If you pay for developmental fee, get the receipt for the developmental fee. Because if you don't get your receipt for developmental fee, in the future, anything can happen. You will still have to pay for developmental fee. Because it's an estate. Do you understand? Get your document intact and get your allocation. Allocation means this is the land. Put in your corner piece. Even if it is within an estate, you can take it, you know, within an estate, you can't just be having any kind of fence. We are the one that does the major perimeter fencing in our estate. But you can do four push to segment your land. And in that case, you can be sure that that land is safe to an extent. But a lot of you buy land 
You just collect document. You now self you are with document. No allocation. You didn't do anything on it. It's bad. If you have ordinary allocation, any sensible person, if they take them to where a land has been, sorry, a land has been allocated, and I'm seeing Mrs. Adeyemi, I'll be like, who is Mrs. Adeyemi? This is not rebirth again. Now. I'm seeing Mrs. Adeyemi. It's a pump that somebody owns the land. So if they are not telling you that, ah, Mrs. Adeyemi wants to sell the land, they don't, they don't sit to people in abroad, though. They say, the person is in abroad, he needs their money, he wants to sell the land. If you are a smart person, you want to like, I would like to talk to Mrs. Adeyemi. In that case, I know that real estate, they still have a say within the estate when you buy land from them. Let's assume you are selling man. Do you understand to me? If you want to sell to me, and daddy is the real estate um, agent here, yeah? they will still be involved in the transaction because they will want to transfer documents to, to me. And what they do, mo because what they do is, it's still business-wise. I don't care how much you want to sell your land when you want to reside. But the person buying must pay me another 10%. And that is why I must be involved. And I will not give the person all the necessary documents that you are not the new owner of the land. But a lot of people are not smart. They even see corner fees, they still go ahead and buy. You are not buying from Mrs. Adeyemi, you are buying from this company. That means something has sold to two people, if not five people, the same land. But in Nigeria now, so many people are now wise, you know why? If they see Mrs. Adeyemi, they will not buy. Even if you tell me the person is in abroad, the person must call me if I'm buying for my client. We must do video call. The person must show me proof of identity. You are Mrs. Adeyemi, can you show me proof of identity? And that is why you need somebody to do some finding out for you. Is it true you want to sell your property? You know, people are brought, some of their siblings sold their property. Because people that are also buying didn't do their proper, uh, proper paperwork. You know, I was to buy an, um, a place for somebody at Bodijeleki, and they said the person that owns it is in abroad. And I requested that I need to talk to the person if the person is in abroad. They said eh, he doesn't have time. I said, if he doesn't have time, then he's not ready to sell. If he's ready to sell, he must have the time. So the agent, you know, all those um, agents, who now, they came to me, they said, eh, what happened is that the land is actually 16 million, but the lawyer wants to sell 20 million because he has added 4 million. That is why he doesn't want me to talk to the person. I said, no, let, me, let it be a deal that he has added 4 million, but I will still need to talk to the person. Now you are telling me the truth. My client does not need to know about how much he has added. But even if my client is going to pay extra four million, I must ensure I buy a good property for my client because my client is in America and I cannot just drop 20 million and say because, no, let me speak to him and let us know at that 20 million transaction. If my client can pay, fine. If he likes the property, there are some property you buy more than how much it is because of what you want to use it for. If my client wants the property, I can advise my client to buy at 20 million, it does not matter. But we must just see ensures that what we are buying is a good buy. Not that some people will just carry people. So many people have property in Nigeria that their documents are still at home. So those people have custody of the receipts and everything. And to sell is easy. And that's why I used to tell people, when you buy property, you go to Nigeria, pack your document, and come here. If you have your document, they will sell your property. Because they've given them the deed, they've given them the receipt, they've given them the survey. What well, remain now? Even if you go to court, what do you want to drag? The person has the document. Being shared is 20,000. Let them transfer your document with, to you with 20,000. Don't keep your document with your mommy or your daddy. Because if I keep my document with my mom and my brother wants to take it, there's nothing I can do. Do you get, you bought a property, just DHL the, the document to me, it's 20,000 to DHL because it should be less than 2 kg. I'm so sure about that. That is land investment. And this is it. How do you make money in land investment? When you want to invest, for those of us that are in abroad, if we want to invest in land, we should invest in new locations that are not too expensive 
And when we are buying, we should not buy one plot. That is not investment. When you are buying locations that are not too expensive, you buy two plots and above. Like if you can buy three plots, if you buy, can buy one acre. Someone like me, I cannot even buy less than one acre when I'm buying any location. Except if I want to buy, let's say, like 100 million. So I'll buy one plot because I don't have the money. Do you understand? But if I need to buy properties that are cheaper, I go for one acre, I go for three plots, depending on what I'm seeing the property to be. The prospect the property is giving me will determine how many I want to, to buy. But for any property, two plots and above is the best because we up with it. We cannot really say this is what will happen in the future. But we are up with it. In. Do you understand what I mean? So if we are up with it, in that, oh, this is what will happen in Lekki, this is what will happen in Ekwe, this and this and this and this. So if you are buying, you buy more than two plots. And when you need to sell one, you still have one there. Or you buy one acre, and when you need to sell like two plots, you still have four in that asset. That is how to invest in landed property. And you felt, okay, I just want to buy three plots. Let me just do the remaining three plots as flipping because I will need the money that, 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 that this time next year. You don't get it. I want to buy what of four million now. But this second four million I'm dropping now. I would like to collect it with my interest. That means you are buying land and you're also doing land flipping. And when we talk about, let me move to rental income. Another way to make money is rental income. There are property that they are in developed area already. You buy. If you can afford to buy, you buy places that people are living, then you build. That means when you build, on a yearly basis, you know how much is coming in. That is also another way to leverage in real estate. Imagine you having like five property in Lagos or let's say different places in Nigeria. And on a yearly basis, you can say this one will bring six million, this one will bring ten million, this one will bring this. Together, maybe everything will give you sixty million. Is that not a good investment? And you have other lands there. So rental income is another way to generate income in property. I have a client in America. When she wants to buy areas that are developed, she will buy two plots, all those Bodije, Lakwe, and the like. So she will now build one of the plots. Two bedroom, six, two bedroom, rent it out. Indirectly, she's using those tenants to sustain the second one. Because in Lagos, you know that you must always wash your land. So she will be buying two, two plots in developed area. But when she needs to buy places like Chagam, Ekwe, those new, new places that are just developing, Aton, she will just buy one acre and forget about it. And those kind of people, they cannot be scared to come home. Because they have investment at home. I remember when um, my sister posted something on the group, a woman in Canada that she doesn't have a document and they told her to go home. She and one of the son and others to remain. And my sister was like, eh, you know, she went to Canada with a good route. They did the normal ELT and they went and they became citizens. And she was like, eh. That is the effect of doing the wrong, doing wrong thing. There's always a consequence for doing wrong thing. We all know. But the way the country is sometimes, you just have to still take some both steps. Well, she was saying this and saying, I'm, one of my sisters in America now replied that and said, if this person know what she was doing 90 years, going home should not be a problem. If you know what you are doing for 19 years, she was talking to me. It's the same person I'm talking about that will buy property. My sister in America will buy property. Well, anywhere I launch, she will buy one acre. Even if I don't launch and I see a property that makes sense, I call her, she will buy. She was like, man, if I come home now, she, she used to be a decorate, these people that decorate. If I come home now into Nigeria, I will build school and I will, do in, I will be in the decoration sector again and I will be making, putting money. A lot of people come abroad and they don't have plans of going home. They don't have plans of giving back to their country. Let us change that motive. We have to give back to that country. If you meet an average, um, the Asian, you will see them, they will tell you, when in uh, 15 years' time, I'm going back to my house. It is only us that want to die here. We are not going to die here. We are going to go back home. And I stopped having that mentality too. 
Alai kon Japan. Where is Japan in to? We have to we have to be able to give back. Some of us will be able to give back in the education sector. Some of us will be able to give back in so many areas. Some of us might even organize um, recreational centers, things like that, provide employment opportunities. That is the way abroad used to be before. People that have been to abroad, they used to come back home and give us job opportunities. But our generation, we want to take it differently. We don't want to go back. No. I keep telling people, sometimes when I tell people I'm going back in the next 15 years, they will be looking at me as if I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. And I told them I chose to be different. I said, see, my son is nine years. Add nine years to 15 years. And the other one is four. Add it to 15 years. I will come back and be checking them in the United Kingdom. Because I will be able to come any time to check them. At 50 years, if I go back, my sister, don't you think I will still enjoy my life? So that is rental income. Rental income is a good way to make money. Another one that is busting my brain now in Nigeria is short legs. For those that have property in choice area, they are now converting it to short legs. It's just like the air Airbnb. And do you know during December period, you will have made the money you were supposed to collect as rent, uh, rent. And do you not know in Nigeria, people now collect those places for birthday parties, family get together, different occasions, and they are making stupid money. How much do you need to get a good short let in Nigeria? If you have 40 to 50 million, 40 to 60 million, you are going to get a very good a very good um, house in Lake Yassi, and you will use it for short let and you make good money. Even when you, you are going to Nigeria, your short let will be the one servicing you. You will not have to pay for, for hotels and the like. It's because some of us are not thinking. The next thing I want to buy now in Nigeria is to buy a sitting house in Lekki that will be used for short let. And anytime I go home, the short let will charge it to me. You don't understand. And that is how short let works. For those of us that are non Nigerian, if we are Ghanaian here, yeah, you have choice area in your country. Get a good property there and start using it for short let. People that want to come in and do holiday for two weeks, they, they rent it, they give you your money. The money for two weeks sometimes is the money for the rentage for the whole year. And people keep coming like that. Do you know the good thing about short let? Your property are, all, are always intact than when you rent it out in renter. Hardly do things get spoiled. You start fixing, 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 fixing. Things are always intact. So imagine yourself in the next 15 years. You've invested in landed property. You've invested in renter income. You have properties that are giving you money. You have properties that you're using for Airbnb, and you now retire. Do you think the kind of car you want to buy when you stop working will be less than what you've been using when you are working? That is what we call financial freedom. And do you know in real estate, even if you don't own a real estate company, you can become a billionaire? It's just a 10-year plan. Give yourself 10 years and tell yourself every year, I must invest in relocation and buy minimum of three plus. That means there are some years you have capacity to buy one acre, you buy. There are some years you have capacity to buy three acres, because you have other projects too. There are some years you have capacity to buy three plus, you buy. Do you know some people are now doing mini estate, even in an estate? Clients will come and say, I want to buy five acres in your estate. And they will buy. God will take you to that level. You will not even be buying to plot again. You will now start doing mini estate in an estate. People are doing it already. And that's why we used to tell you, the right time to buy is now. A lot of you, when they tell you, if I start telling you shagam now, you'll be like, ah, I cannot buy shagam. But write it down today. I don't have shagam to sell to you today. But we as a company, we are going into shagam to go and invest and come and sell back in two years. You don't understand. Because you cannot go there when people have gone there. You are supposed to go earlier. 
because you must be able to project that after a pair where the road that leads to a pair is a pair jet and it is shagam it corrodes shagam so and there's no there's no much land in lagos state there's no ship land again in lagos state the only ship land you can get in lagos state now probably ikorodu epe and maybe badaji side am i correct even the beduleki i used to tell people if they want to sell the beduleki for you see six five million below don't buy it's not legit again because documentation alone cannot make us sell the beduleki five million cannot make us sell the beduleki five million again documentation that we will do in the estate cannot make us but those beduleki we sold it 800 1 million 2 million those days too Let's move on. Let me move to my next slide. I need to be fast. Why should you build financial freedom? Live the lifestyle you desire. Planning your retirement. We've talked about how you plan your retirement. The 10 years plan. You leverage on what you have done. So leverage is when you stop working. What you have done will start working for you. And I talk about generation we generational wealth. Even the Bible said it. A good, a good man. And when he's talking about man, he's talking about both man and woman who live in inheritance for his children, children. Though inheritance is not only this land we are talking about. Even godly character is part of what he's talking to us about. A lot of things. But even real estate is part of what he's talking about. You want to, you want to leave a footprint. There are some things you do, people will remember you for. Even your children will keep talking about my mom, my mom, my dad, my dad, because of what you do. Even the little morals we have is our parents that are instilling in, in us. That no matter what, we still have that moral. And we have that character. So it is um, biblical for us to have generational wealth. Some people will be like, ah, if you are too rich, you might not make heaven. But to me, I used to look at it, if I'm poor, I will not make heaven. Because I will do a lot of wrong things that will not make me to make heaven. That is the way I look at it. If I'm poor, I might do a lot of wrong things that will make me not to make it. But when I'm rich, I think it's easier for me to do the right thing when I have money. Then that is the way I think. Maybe some people. Next slide. So um, I have a location to present to you this afternoon. It is Ekwe. Let's move to the next one. That one will be showing the name of the location. It's Richmond Estate, Ketu Ekwe. A lot of, when we invested in this location, like I said, everything was proposed, international airport, proposed, international market. But do you know this morning, I have good news for you that when we bought this location, it was all proposed. But do you know that today, everything is no more proposed. Last week, it was approved, Leki Ekwe, the airport. Three weeks ago, Sonwolu launched the international market in Ekwe. Let me tell you, you follow trend when you are buying real estate. Lagos State is interested in Lekki Ekbe Hassi because that is even where their own property too is. Our God knows the ones they've stolen, that is where it is. So you must follow trend. And they have to develop it because they want it to increase in value. I can virtually tell you every road in Ekbe is intact during Ambody regime. And it's not somebody that did that. Lagos State, it is Lagos State plan. They want to just use it against somebody when they were saying somebody only develop it. But Lagos State has their plan. And it is still the plan he followed. And a lot of things is happening in Ekwe. Last week again, do you know Julius Berger opened a cashew plant in Ekwe? Please, all the workers, where are they going to live? Even Dangote Refinery, people cannot stay beside Dangote Refinery. They will come and live in Ekwe. I used to tell people, Ekwe is a very good place for you to invest. And as of today, Ekwe is 2 million inclusive for, for 500 square meter, 1.3 million for 250 square meter. When I say all inclusive, it means allocation, your deed of agreement, your survey money, and your developmental fee is included. Do you get what I mean? For those of you that have been buying in real estate, you know when you pay for your land, they will tell you to pay allocation and deed, they will tell you to pay survey, and they will tell you to pay developmental fee. But this is all inclus inclusive. Let's move to the next slide. Okay, this is the layout of um, K2 Equa. So let's move to the next slide. 
So the landmark, like I said, approved Lekki Ekwe International Airport, Alago City, Ekwe Resort, International Market, is a huge market though, that is standing on 1,000 feet acres of land. Lagos State Ministry of Agriculture and this, and Judo Beggars Cashew Processing Plant. Do you know that I had to remove some other things? It's more than this. They have a lot of landmarks. We have Isimi Lagos. We have Duke Air Africa. I don't know if we have anybody that has seen the advertisement of Isimi Lagos and Duke Air Africa. Do you know some guys went to Ekwe and they invested in Ekwe, did a lot of things, and they are selling for 15 million. That same Ekwe, K2 Ekwe that I'm talking about. God will take me there. Help me to say amen. <laughs> because I begin to wonder, these guys are selling the same land I'm selling. And what did they do? When they launched, they, they actually did everything. They did all their perimeter fencing. They said helicopter was going to land. And the day they were launching, it actually landed. And they are selling to you people. It's the diaspora that buy real estate. Don't, you don't know. And they are selling at premium price because that is what you want. I remember my husband was telling me, how can you go and sell this land, two million to this church? You need to sell it like three million. I said, no. Do you know I've been talking to Pastor Mrs. She even know when we launched this land. She's aware of the price and everything. My husband said, they ask for people, they like expensive things. Things like that. I said, no, don't worry. God will take us there. You don't understand because it's the same property. This property, I can tell you, we only even just have 30 plots to sell because I don't want to sell the property again. I just want to sell 30 plots and keep the rest for my own future generation. I'll move forward. Let's move forward. Let's see the next slide. Okay, this is the news I talk about. Let's move forward. It has been approved. Um, Julius Berger, this is it. I'm showing you this so that you know that I'm not just saying it. These are facts. Let's move to the next one. Okay, let's move. These are still the cashew plant. Um, the futures in the estate. So what sh you should expect. You're all inclusive. Include your perimeter fencing. Good road network, electricity, gate house, security. The perimeter fencing and gate house is something we are commencing this November. Then in an estate, you know, when you buy your home outside the estate, you'll be telling your brother to go and be checking it for you if your land is there. So in an estate, what we do is that we employ a security that lives there, that will always update the MD what is going on on a daily basis after the perimeter fencing has been done. So most times, security is always in place, gate house is always in place, perimeter fencing is always in place. We wait for when there is light, then we also take our light. We might not be able to take light now. Do you get what I mean? And the good road network is in the layout already. It's just for us to follow it when we are ready. So those are the futures in the estate. Every other futures that will be added, that will be later in the years. And that is what we call infrastructure. Is no more developmental. So we can come together as all the landlords and say, let's do this in the estate. And we did. I will tell you nothing but the truth. A lot of real estate will not tell you there's still infrastructure. There will be infrastructure because we cannot just leave the estate with these features because these are the features you will see. So that one will now be, by the time we finish selling the location, we have a WhatsApp group for all buyers. And by the time everybody starts developing where they are developing, we can come together as landlords and say, this is what we want. Uh, why don't you just do this? We'll do it together. And then it, our estates will not be the ones saying they will take charge. You have a share amount of your committee. Our own is to oversee and make sure that the estate is always intact. Let's move to the next slide. So conclusion, I say start investing in property in regardless of how much you have. Don't wait till you have all the money. If we cannot buy 60 million house, then we start buying land. Some people, their taste is high that they, they don't have anything till they grow up. It's good to have a good taste, but you have to start from where you can afford. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to buy a house, I want to buy a house. You don't even have the money yet. Why don't you start with buying land? In the future, you might need to buy that house and you sell some of your land to complete the payment. That is how to do things. Start investing in property even if you have no phone knowledge. So you seek for knowledge. 
You cannot say, some people will still say, I'm still thinking about it, I'm still thinking about it. It will keep going up. Property don't come down. Even when we tell you we are doing sales in December, it's not coming down. That is just the fact. Um, gain knowledge. Start investing even if you have little time. So let's move to the next one. I have my details in the next one. The website, you can mail our office. That is my international number. You can call me. If you want to email me directly, you can email me on remileko.shomefun, CEO at rebirthhomes.com. So let's the media, let's have the videos now. I, I need to show you the land. So let's have the videos of the land.
not really your fault. I will have come earlier to advertise. But because church had their program, and the only time I can come in is doing family talks like this. So I'm just going to be giving that privilege to give church 10% discount. That means you'll be buying at 1.9 million. Because to be fair, if I had come last month, probably you would have bought 1.650. Mommy, you see, let me, if I start telling you how land works now, it will be as if I'm teaching you business. When you have 100 plus to sell, you don't sell at the same price. And that is why when they launch a land, the people that buy when they launch are the people that buy the cheapest. After launching, you are buying at the real price. You are still buying. See, after we've sold and we have limited plots, we don't want to sell. You might see it tomorrow. You, some of you will be seeing my DP. You will see 4 million. You know why? We don't really want to sell. So people that will buy that time are people that really want that location. Because we've actually sold what we want to sell. So at 2 million, you are still buying at a good price. Some of you that bought at 2 million, maybe your phone will now be saying, I just want to buy that location. You can try to sell 3 million. My own is, you sell 3 million, you give us our 10% and we'll do all your documents. Because it will keep increasing. You, you don't even know what will happen in the phase two. So thank you very much, church, for having me here. I want to sincerely appreciate Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Yemi and Ola Kuku. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful, and I'm happy to be here. If you have any question pertaining to what we have discussed, I would like to answer your question. Sir? For one plot, For one plot. and that is the total package. One million. 1.9 million. For the total. For the total package. What do you give me? Either in the photo pack or paper services. No, what you get is this. You get your receipt. You get your deed of agreement. Your survey fee is included. And developmental fee is there. So now, aside me bringing back your document to you that you have bought, I'm also going to do physical allocation where you will see your corner piece and your name will be written on it. If you have a family member that wants to represent you, we give, a we give like a small certificate for allocation. And if you don't have, we do video of your own portion and send to you. Do you get what I mean? If you have bought and we have allocated, somebody can come on the day of allocation to receive your allocation for you, sir. So this one is all inclusive. Yeah, our main office is at 20. Adewale, Ade Tokumbo. And yeah, I have I have physical form here. I have my card here. I can actually check you. I can actually give you my complimentary card, and I have the forms here for those that will be interested to buy, and we'll be giving you three months grace to make payments because all inclusive is outright payment. If you look at other flyer, I didn't put it there. When you are paying within six months, there is a month you will pay. When you are paying for one year, it's a different amount. But most times when we sell outright, we give it zero to two months to pay up. So I'll, I'll be giving you three months to pay up, which is October, November, and December. So if you are buying, you make a deposit, then you can pay your money within three months. OK, you will see in the advertisement that C of O is in view. C of O is in view. Because you can only get your C of O when you have done your register survey. And in Lagos State, now, C of O is not something you will just get in three months, two months. It takes two years, mommy. Yeah. And, and that is why, you know I said, oh, what's that inclusive covered? That is why I said, 
allocation, documentation, developmental, and um, survey. So when I give you your receipt, it's going to be written there. In future, you know that I'm not paying for survey. I'm not paying for developmental. Do you understand? But when we eventually do C of O, we have to give you C of O, then you have to pay. It's not something that is fast. And I will classify that as infrastructure, things that will come after. Still need to pay for that. Then you will need to pay for C of O. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, my question is this, uh, about the property in UK, when you are mentioning the amount of one is supposed to be earning before you can start getting this uh, property here in UK. In a, <coughs> in a situation whereby you have the property, but when you started in, uh, firstly, you are uh, let's say, let me use myself now that I was able to say, yes, I can afford 250,000 property, and I did uh, the contract for five years. After five years, now I have to remodel, go back to the bank or shop around again. But now, maybe the job I was doing that time, now I'm not earning more than up to that amount now. So what will happen? Because you still need to get a bank to lend you the money, and they will be asking for the pay slip, things like that. But now, initially, maybe I was earning... 80,000 per annum. But after five years, maybe now I'm earning 40,000. So what will happen? Most times, you know when you mortgage now, it's like when you borrow money, you might lose your house. Eh? But this is the reality. If we are earning 80, it's not good when all our budget is based on the amount we really earn. If you are earning 80,000 in the first place, you should go for something lesser. Do you get what I mean? That is how to plan. You don't just plan. Th some people, they can have two million, and they will just go and stick their head in something that is two million. After they now put their head there, they are struggling in other places. Just because you think, I want to achieve this. It's not too good enough to do that kind of thing. If you are earning 80,000, then you should look for a property that is like half of your salary. And if you can pay up on time, it's good. Only that this country just encourage you to pay for 20 years, 25 years. Mostly if they leave us as Africa, eh, we can quickly pay our money within five years. That as I'm, this is what I want. This is how we used to do in Africa. I'm buying house in UK. In the next five years, that is what you want to face. That is our way of life. But now they are giving you opportunity to now spread your tantacy. You don't even to need to say it's only UK. You are servicing this one, you are servicing this one, you are servicing this one. It depends on what your mind can carry. Do you understand? But always make sure that any mortgage you are going for is convenient for you. Do you understand? Always make sure that it is convenient for you and it is rea is realistic. That come what it, I will be able to pay. So everything has to do with our age and everything. I hold that mind now. I'm going for a mortgage of 25 years. Have I looked at the feasibility with my age? Will I still be working then? And that is why this discussion is good for us and it's good for our children. A lot of our children will start earning when they are 20, 22 now. Do you understand? And they might not even be married. Do you know this information? You can use it for them then. And they will be earning 60,000 pounds per annum. And they don't know what to use money for. But you can help them to be servicing mortgage. They have the time. It's not Nigeria that you graduate and there's no job. They will get the job. So you can encourage them to buy a house, even at 22. At 20. So we must know how things work. But for us, we can go for 20 years mortgage, depending on our age. If you are 50 now and you want to go for mortgage, I don't know how you want to pay. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Like you said in in the heading of, of ways you could acquire property, you said shared ownership is not advisable. Why not? Well, Why? it's then not as if it's not. Okay. It depends on what you decide to go okay. for. Okay. 
because I had heard the share. Some people, that it's not advisable. Some people will go for auction house, but most of the auction house, if you are not careful, for example, you will spend more. Mm. You are thinking you are buying sheep. Mm. I was watching a documentary. They bought the auction house. At the end of the day, everywhere, water, water. Yeah. So at the end of the day, by the time they want to repair the house, if they have gone for a mortgage to buy a house, it might be better. Mm. And that is why it is essential you do your research mm. and seek advice to know the one that suits your own type. Me now, it's not as if I can't buy an auction house. You know the way we are as a Christian, we just use faith. We say God will locate it for me. It's good if you have that kind of faith. And you buy it and you do not have damages so to do yeah. too much. But I would rather go and buy a house that everything is intact and I start paying. That is what me I would do. Mm. So it's not necessary you do what I do, mm. but you do what suits your own life mm. style. I have people that like to buy old building. They told me reason for it. It's a good reason. Mm. And I have people that like to buy new building. Mm. The person tell me that old building are more stronger than the new building. Mm. I say it's the same mentality all over the world. For me, I will buy a new building. Second question, ma. Second question. Yes, ma. We were talking about legibility. Um, presenting some paperwork, proof of funds, proof of address, and all that. Um, I've found out that people um, from back home, they live from back home, they do buy houses here. Yes, residents, UK citizen, no, foreigners can buy. From, from back home? Yes, they can buy. If you have your money, all our senators, they have house but here now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's still their proof of bond that allows them buy. Not proof of, ad, uh, like, legibility. You might be, like, an official that you can go and buy it with actual legibility. Even in Dubai. Dubai. And in UK, like, if you're on tier 4, you can't buy you don't understand. Like, if you want to be paying small, small, your credit um, score will not be able, you won't be able to buy because of your level. Probably some that are in tier two that are started working can still buy. So if I say you are not eligible, probably as a student, you might not just be eligible. And you might have your money, but they don't see you as somebody that can buy. So you wait, you get the information, so that when it is the right time for you to buy, you just apply and buy. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, um, I agree with you. I'm just going to reiterate. I'm not asking any question. I'm just reiterating about what you said about share the market. We had experience two years ago. It's not a good idea. It's just like you are you are mortgaging for another person. Mm -hmm. Side issues. It's as good as you are still renting. They might mm -hmm. share 25 percent. Um, they they can sell 25 percent um, ownership to you. They will promise you that after so 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 yes, you can sell the remaining. No, you end up paying and paying and. No, you can't. Like um, she was talking about F to buy. For share, for share ownership, right? No, for to buy outrightly. She's talking about buying outrightly. There is nothing God cannot do. Maybe so one day we'll be able to buy outrightly too. So, um, um, I'm just going to ask another question regarding Africans. Um, you talk, you spoke about African um, development. How far is, um, you said the market and the cashew, wherever it's going to be in the Richmond estate. Is it outside it's or It's not in Richmond estate. Okay. It's landmark around the estate. Oh, okay. So when we say um, Lekki Ekpe Airport, it could be 30 minutes away from Richmond. Okay. And cashew plant. So we're talking about, um, let's pick Ikeja International Airport, for example. Mm. So any environment like Dokwemu and the likes, okay. all of them, you know they are, in the same environment. Okay. So that is the way Ekpe is to Lekki Ekpe International Airport. It's like okay. 30 minutes away okay. from Ekpe. They have, um, the international market is not even up to 30 minutes. That one will be like 15 minutes away. So a lot of things is coming into Ekpe. It okay. is environment. It's not within Richmond. And how far is that from Safaya Estate? Well, I don't know where Safaya Estate is. We have a lot of estates. In yeah. K2 Airport, for instance, we have about 12 estates in my vicinity. Do you understand? A lot of real estate. I remember when we went to get that property, we were the second person to buy from those on Monule. 
we and one other will let's say we came in for negotiation, then we we're the second and third. Right now, report getting to me. Now they say we have 12 real estate in that house already. So what happened is everybody is buying. And they cannot even buy the price we buy. Because we bought when we don't know international market was coming. We bought when we don't know all those things were coming. Some of them were just proposed. And we keep saying proposed, proposed. And they are materializing now. And that's why I tell people, this is the best time to invest in that property. If you really want to. In Lagos, for example, Ekpe is a good location to invest in now in Lagos. Because most of this Ibeduleki we are talking about have been sold off. Hardly will you see any Ibeduleki land that is vacant, except you are buying from somebody that has bought before. And you need to be careful. You need to be careful. So I have my forms here for those that will want uh, to collect. We still uh, two more questions, then we can round up. Then if you need any further clarification, you, you can, can get a number, me, then yeah. you can contact her directly because of her time. So it's not even a question. I'm trying to, I mean, to uh, enlighten uh, my sister. Sister Roke? Okay. okay. Yeah, please. About the mortgage, you don't need much money. Your 5% deposit, if you have 5,000, first buyer, you will buy your mortgage. Once you have your evidence of the payment, your pay slip. So don't struggle, look around. Don't, don't say I'm going to buy a Hanshosh. You can buy a Dagna. You, you, when Dagna is a bit high, look for another environment around Dagna that the money can be a bit low yeah. than that. If that one is still high to your whole pocket, look around again for you to buy first. How do you get this 5,000? 10 of you can come together for contribution. And you enter into contribution. You Take it. your first contribution. I go to your mortgage. Then you buy your mortgage. You don't need to struggle about it. It's, it's what we don't know. Exactly. This is what Asian people do. I'm telling you. Yes. And, and buy where you can afford now. And that is the point I make. You want to stay in London. You don't have 500,000. But there are places around London that is still quite affordable. Buy it no, now. Sure. God can still, if God wants you to stay in London, God will still provide it and you will still stay in London. Do you understand? So you can still move to your desire. Um, location. So don't wait to say, eh, I don't like this place. If you don't buy now, it will keep increasing. It will not devalue. It will keep increasing. And that La is why it is essential for us. Last to take question from now. Grandma. Last question. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, How do you describe that uh, environment? The estate. Generally, like uh, Leki now, water is disturbing them every year. Okay. That place is it a, uh, a dry Syria? land? Is it in Rasaid? Or no, no, no. Ekpe is there are some places in Ekpe that are also waterlogged. I won't lie to you. There are some places in Ekpe. I've been to a lot of sites in Ekpe that also has water, but the water we have in Ekpe is not like the one in Ibeduleki. But Richmond Estate is hundred percent dry land. Is under see, mommy. I will buy Ega because I, ha I have the basic understanding of what land is it to me. Lagos State is selling Idera City now. I have applied as a complaint to buy Idera City from Lagos State. I've told you Lagos State is in the business of doing biz real estate business too. They have acres to sell and if, if you can only buy if you have a registered company. Form alone is three million that I, want, I went to collect from that I'm not even sure they will allocate to me. That land is here now, that I want to go and buy you in Idera City. Is at Ibeduleki. And they will give us everything, site, government allocation and everything. People like you, you can be scared to buy Ira because you don't know what it is already. Even water, they are building on top water. In Aja. Do you understand what I'm saying? So me, I know that when I buy, I will say. You don't understand. If I'm talking to you to come and buy, I will name it my own estate, not the city when we buy. And you say it is Sira, don't buy. People that look at it, that ah, we will kill it. Eh? Those kind of Sira is where people are rushing to, to buy. Everybody will kill and build. 
When my lawyer called me, he did not lie to me that it is dry. He already told me when he was sent calling me that the form is out, he ran it. And that's why it's good to have a good lawyer. He's not telling me he's not Ira. He told me he ran it. But me, I knew what I'm buying that. Oh, won't it? But Epa is dried. Epa is dried. It's dry. Epa, most area in Epa is dry. Most of the area in Epa. Epa is like 70% dry. Then others are... There are some areas in Igonla that are water lodge. I know what I'm talking about. If it is water, I will tell you. We know how to market water. We know how to market dry. It depends on what you are seeing, mommy. Yeah. So it depends on what you are seeing. Thank you, ma. Yes, ma. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, please, because people have a lot of questions or uh, anything bothering your heart, please, they will, she will give you a number, a contact details, email address, and everything so that you can contact her. Because of our time, we need to, we need to round up now. We need to round up. So, pass on. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. Let's be on our feet as we just appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I just want you to specially bless the name of the Lord upon our sister's life for all the information that has been given today. You know, at times you might even think that you know all. But let's bless the Lord for our life. Let's bless the Lord for our family. Let's thank God for the grace that the Lord has given to her to be a blessing unto us this afternoon. And let's tell the King of Kings and the Lord that the Lord himself is, you know, it's not by our power or by our might that she is even offering to give us discount. But let's ask the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that for what she has done in our midst today, because we are all believers, and one way or the other, I believe we've been blessed. In the UK, in Nigeria, whatever part of Africa, I believe the, the, uh, the law is still, is still the same. The, how, how will I put it? The idea is still the same everywhere. I just want us to bless the name of the Lord for our life. Let's thank Paul. Let's thank God for our lives. Let's thank God for our family. Let's thank God for our business. The Father, King of Kings, you will bless your daughter in return in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's ask the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that the business the Lord will take higher in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, the works of our hands, our family, Father, you will bless, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. As you have used that to be a blessing today, Father, I pray, O oh Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we have nothing to give unto her, but Father, we ask that you will bless her in return. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will bless our family. You will bless our businesses. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we that we have, you know, gained one thing or the other this very day. Father, I pray we will not just be here as alone. In the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to be able to tap into what she, she has taught us today. I believe we've all tapped one way or the other. But be way, the, the, the grace to begin to take definite action. Father, grant unto us in Jesus' name. Father, once again, we thank you. Father, we worship you. Father, we appreciate you. Let your name be praised. Let your name be worshipped. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before I call on our daddy to uh, bless us uh, as we share the grace, I just want to encourage us and remind us once again, Tuesday, I've sent the details on our WhatsApp. Let's try and register for the workers' rally. The viewing center, I think the one that is closer to here for those of us living in this area is Liberty House. I've sent those uh, viewing centers as well. Secondly, Friday is uh, a Festival of Light. I want to encourage us. The details to register is there as well. Let's register, and it's my prayer. The team is on changing changer. God himself awaits us to change our level, to change our situation around in the mighty name of Jesus. And then we turn our situations for better in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, please. Praise the Lord. Shall we stretch forth our hands to come to the Lord? Jesus said in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 39, when there was come 
at the middle of the sea. And um, the disciples woke up and said, we were sleeping when we were about to perish. And he just spoke some words into their lives. And that is exactly what I'm going to say now. Our sister, God has used her to open our eyes to so many things. But we know and we are aware that with the situation in this country, uh, we may find it difficult to do one thing again. I stand on this altar today and I decree, as Jesus said to the storm, that whatever thing that might be affecting our finances, that doesn't allow us to live our lives the way we ought to live them, to enjoy our harness, to do our investments, and to take care of our children. In the name that is above every other name, we decree this morning that it is still in the name of Jesus. <laughs> every ravaging storm in any aspect of our lives, because we have gathered unto the Lord today to worship him and to listen to this message that we have just heard from this, our sister. We decree you to be still in the name of Jesus. Amen. And not that you will be still alone. We also decree that you be quiet forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the calmness we require to live a good life as Christians. From this moment, we claim them for our lives in the name of Jesus. As we go, the presence of God shall go with us. The Lord shall bless the works of our hands. And the almighty God shall raise our horns. And at the end of everything, O Lord, in this UK, our labor, your labor, over yourself, over your children shall not be in vain in the name of Amen. Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Our prophetic declaration. Okay. So we can read. Why don't you go? this year, I will continually be a candidate of God's present surprises as I live to be forever grateful and praise to the Lord. I declare that I am a candidate of God's power. I do not walk in the flesh, but in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. My words are blessed. My ways are blessed. My works are blessed. My ways are blessed. My land is blessed. My life is blessed. I cannot and I will not fall afraid. The grace of God will be sufficient for me. This year, a rock of redemption family is sufficiently loaded to do a flood. Because the almighty God is our helper, and in him alone we trust. The blood of Jesus will grant me victory. I walk no more in the path of sin, sickness, suffering, struggling, shame, and sorrow. I'll be divinely protected from every sin and unseen evil. Because I bear the mark of the Lord upon my body. By the grace and mercies of God, I am shifted to the positive and progressive side of life as evidence of God's signs and wonders in Jesus. That shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, should I need to close the... Okay, shall we share the closing fellowship one to go? The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever and ever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be always jealous of the Lord forever and ever. God bless you.